we have Philip Liu, who is the head of strategy at Ava Labs, which is the team behind Avalanche. So he's going to be talking about the power of subnets. So you've got 10 minutes. Take us to 25 minutes after the hour. I'll join you uh, shortly. So 10 minutes and power of subnets. Thank you, Philip. Awesome. Um, pulling up the uh, slides now. Uh, okay, great. Awesome. Yeah, so my name's Philip, um, head of strategy at Ava Labs. Um, currently, uh, you know, uh, going to be presenting on uh, the power of subnets. Okay, so before we talk about subnets, um, I think it's helpful just to talk a little bit about the underlying technology of Avalanche. So Avalanche is a third generation consensus protocol that functions in a way uh, and operates in a way that's completely different from any other consensus family that came before. So starting with the first family of consensus protocols called classical consensus, um, this uh, family of consensus protocols uh, is very well studied in academia. Um, it's very well suited for permissioned settings. So a lot of large tech companies, they're, they're most likely running a classical consensus protocol in their databases. Um, and you know, they're relatively performant. Um, but the thing, uh, the, the, the sort of main drawback is that they don't really scale well beyond a hundred participants. So that means they're not really suited for a decentralized environment. So along comes, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto in 2009, um, he creates a, a new consensus protocol, completely different from the classical consensus family, um, that is based on proof of work. Um, and the most sort of you know defining feature of these consensus protocols around you know nakamoto consensus is that they allow um for permissionless uh validation of the network so anybody who has a miner right can participate in this consensus protocol but we all know the drawbacks you know uh, it's very very high um transaction fees um very very low throughput and you know long confirmation times Avalanche comes in as sort of a best of both worlds between these two approaches. It's how it functions is very similar to classical consensus, but some of its security features are very similar to that of Nakamoto. Um, and what that allows for is for the network to have very, very high throughput, very low um, latency and confirmation times, and also very, very low transaction fees. Um, it can also scale to millions of nodes, millions of participants. Um, that, you know, it makes it one of the most decentralized protocols in existence today. So just to talk a little bit about, you know, the current state of Avalanche. So if somebody were, you know, a developer wanted to deploy an application on Avalanche, there's, there's a couple of options. One is just to deploy directly on the main Avalanche network. Um, this is really simple and easy to do because the Avalanche network supports the entirety of the EVM which makes it such that you know, developers can easily port over their applications to Avalanche um, without having to rewrite, rewrite everything. Um, so you see a lot of these sort of you know, large DeFi blue chips like Aave, Curb, so on and so forth, they've already deployed on Avalanche and have been functioning you know, um, pretty well ever since deployment. Um, there's an, also another option called subnets, which we'll get into in a bit. Um, but this graph over here kind of shows the growth of the network and, um, uh, the, the, yeah, the graph shows the, um, total transaction count across the main network and subnets, as you can see, it's, uh, been growing in a very steady, uh, steady trajectory. So currently if you're an application developer, you really have two options. One is just to deploy on a public network like Ethereum. Um, but we all know that, you know, Ethereum has very, very high transaction fees. Um, and those fees can get even higher when there's a lot of network activity. Um, there's other, uh, you know, layer one alternatives, but, you know, some of them also have problems with congestion and also downtime. Um, and then there's another option, which is build your own chain, right? Um, and one example is Axie Infinity building out the road in blockchain. And so what this requires is, um, you know, uh, hiring and building out uh you know a team to, to 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 build and manage the infrastructure which is usually a 12-month process um you know uh separate chains they all have their sort of different implementations so 
um, there's it, it's very hard to kind of you know, mix and match technologies and borrow from other chains. Um, and even if you're using something like an EVM or Ethereum virtual machine based chain, there's always constant updates to the technology from the Ethereum team, right? And that's actually very hard to, to the ma maintain and you know, ensure that you're merging in all the updates um, and, and while ensuring that your network is always stable. So enter the solution, uh, let's see, subnets. Yeah, uh, we call them a, a layer one as a service, but a very simple description of subnets is that they're essentially just a custom network in the broader Avalanche platform that anybody can deploy. Um, and so the sort of main value proposition of subnets is that they're extremely flexible. So you can make them either permissioned or permissionless. Um, you could customize your virtual machine. So you can use an Ethereum virtual machine based subnet, or you can deploy an EV, uh, yeah, EVM based subnet or Rust based subnet or Wasm based subnet, right? Or you can make any type of modifications you want, such as, you know, uh, if you want to deploy a roll up, right, that takes advantage of the security of the main Avalanche network, you can do that as well. Um, another uh, great feature is that developers can also uh, use their native token as the gas fee um, for these networks, um, as opposed to using, you know, Avalanche, to, uh, you know, a Vox token, for example. Um, and that, you know, usually helps with creating new, you know, economic models, right? And lastly, the out, it, there's, there's a piece of interoperability, a feature of interoperability between these subnets, right, that make it, uh, you know, uh, sort of an advantage, right, to, to, you know, sort of deploy your network within the broader Avalanche uh, ecosystem. So these are a couple of examples of subnets. Um, I think you know my uh, video might be uh, kind of overlapping some of the text here, but um, so so it's starting with a couple of subnets that have gone live. DeFi Kingdoms was the first uh, project to deploy a subnet. Um, essentially, what what they did. So DeFi Kingdoms is a you know a blockchain based game. Um, they expanded their map to create a, a completely new uh, realm called Crystal Veil vale and a completely new token called Crystal. Um, and you know, so far the network has been running in production for about two months. Um, no issues at all with, with any type of you know, downtime. Um, you know, the network is probably close to 100% uptime um, with over 14 million transactions processed over these, these uh, almost three months, I, I, um, I'd assume. And, so for another subnet that deployed, it's called the Swimmer Network, uh, deployed by the Cravata team that was the first gaming project to launch on Avalanche. Um, this uh, network has been live for about two weeks and you know about 8 million transactions processed, uh, all without any issues uh, at all as well. Um, and so a lot of you know uh, projects right now they they're either sort of you know deploying their own subnets directly or they're starting on the Avalanche main network on the C chain where we have you know the smart contracts um, and you know the C chain support is the chain that supports the EVM and so you know games like Snail Trail uh, that that's also a game that's deployed on Avalanche they're able to you know deploy directly right uh, build their community start getting traction for the game and later on bridge to a subnet if necessary. So here's a couple more, um, you know, sub networks that are in the pipeline. Um, what's notable here is that there's a couple of these more AAA games. Um, so currently, sub networks are, are best suited for gaming projects, um, just because you know a lot of them need a, a kind of very high speed, dedicated environment that runs on their own native token. Um, so Ascenders and Shrapnel, these are both AAA games. Um, that are building very, very high quality, uh, you know, more sort of complicated games on Avalanche. Uh, Pocket World is also a, a, an existing game, which has over, you know, 10 million users. They've already announced that they're building a subnet. Um, and Wildlife Studios is a traditional uh, Web2 uh, gaming publishing studio that um, has already, uh, you know, um, announced that they would be building an Avalanche subnet for their game, Castle Crush. Uh, lastly, we, we uh, announced a, a, a wallet called Core that would essentially be, you know, the wallet that would interface with these different types of subnets. It's a, a much better user experience than using something like a MetaMask. 
So lastly, uh, like to sort of mention uh, another effort. So a lot of the subnets, as mentioned, are, are more gaming focused just because, um, you know, uh, it's probably the best fit for now. But, you know, subnets can enable any type of use case. And so one interesting use case is an institutional subnet that is specifically dedicated for institutions. And one of the really cool features of a subnet is that you can enable any type of rule set you want. Um, and for example, for the institutional subnet, you can en enable um, native compliance at the network layer. Um, so a lot of uh, a lot of the problem with uh, larger institutions trying to access DeFi is that um, within the DeFi ecosystem, there's there's really no compliance, right? And so what Av you know the Avalanche subnet enables is that um, compliance and KYC features uh, to be embedded and um, supported at a protocol level, so that all the participants in the subnetwork, um, you know, uh, are, are compliant, right, with with those requirements. Um, and, and, and so, yeah, uh, we're really excited about this initiative. We've got, you know, uh, folks uh, such as Golden Tree and uh, Valkyrie, which are more sort of traditional hedge fund and asset manager uh, asset managers, to you know, uh, market makers like Jump and Wintermute, to um, existing DeFi protocols like Aave, already um, you know uh, committed to participating in this institutional summit. Yeah, uh, that was the presentation. Um, thank you all for, for attending today. Um, I just uh, put down our uh, uh, official Twitter uh, handle and also mine if anybody wants to get in touch.